Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. So, as you might have known, the reserve list is starting to become one of those places where I'm having trouble finding value anymore. So, I made this list. This is opinion, obviously. But the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to rate the cards out of 40 based on their power, value, art, and fun. And we'll have to see if that actually makes sense because I certainly can't do it by pricing and what people think is powerful or what people think is valuable because it's just so skewed right now. All right, anyways, let's get to this. I want to cover this off much faster than the previous one, especially since a lot of these cards, all of these cards are from the previous five videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and let's get to it. So the first card is Abeyance. It's from Weatherlight. It costs one white, one colorless, and it says until end of turn, target player cannot play instants, interrupts, sorceries, or abilities, and you get to draw a card. So I, per I personally think that this card is pretty powerful for what it does. Its art looks cool, but its value has spiked to insane levels in the last couple of days. So no go there. And it looks very unfun coming in from an opponent. So I'm going to leave it as a 20 out of 40 and move on to another card. So the next card is Aberroth. So Aberroth is a four colorless, two green. Cumulative upkeep, put a minus one, minus one counter on Aberroth. It comes in as a nine, nine. I think this card is pretty cool. Minus one, minus one counters can be dealt with. For a reserve list card, it's a big creature. And for all of its pluses and minuses, I think the art looks cool. The flavor text is nice. It looks kind of fun to see what gimmicky card decks you can put this in. Power level is medium. And I think it actually has some value right now. It's from the exact same set as the previous one. Only thing is the rarity, which makes a big difference, obviously. I don't know if there's actually a massive difference in rarity or printing, but we'll have to see. Moving on, Acidic Dagger. Total, 17 out of 40. It is a four mana artifact, which says pay four, tap, destroy any non-wall creatures receiving combat damage from target creatures this turn. If targeted creature leaves play, bury Acidic Dagger, use this ability only before defense is chosen. Now I have been told that the way this works is that Dagger stays on the creature, your creature, as long as your creature is still alive throughout its damaging abilities. So I think this is actually pretty fun if you can put it onto a pinging deck. The only problem is that it costs five. Power level is not there. Fun factor is there if you can somehow make it a bit cheaper and do some funky stuff with artifacts. Art looks kind of cool, mischievous, got like a bridge in the background it's got this weird typhoon thing water uh, i assume it maybe it's a cave but it is trying to move up a bit i put the value as pretty low because it's not exactly an amazing card i just think it might be cool moving on ages of the meek total 14 out of 40 it is a three mana artifact it says tap one tap target one one creature gets plus one plus two until end of turn so I think this card is terrible. Ah, okay, it's not terrible. It's boring. There's no real amazing factor about this. The art is, uh, the sword looks nice and the value is okay. It is starting to spike as everything else is right now. Moving on. Aelo Pile. So I actually Googled this. It's actually kind of cool. We'll get to that soon. Aelo Pile is a two mana artifact. Pay one. Tap, sacrifice Aelo Pile to deal two damage to any target creature. Any target, actually. It's even better than just target creature. It feels like a shock that costs an extra two mana, but it comes in an artifact's body. Ha Power is four. I put it there because it's probably one of the more useful cards that I've seen, which is sad. Reserve list does have a lot of garbage in it, which is why I made the previous videos in the first place. Its value is there because it's cheap right now. It's moving up, but as it was, and that was a point when it was $8. Just imagine buying that then. Better hope for something like this nowadays. Uh, art is kind of cool, and the fun factor is to try to see what you can make out of this card. And a Aelo Pile, also known as a Hero's Engine, is a simple bladeless radical radial steam turbine, which spins when the center water container is heated. Torque is produced by steam jet exiting the turbine, which like a tip jet or rocket engine. So I assume that one of these explodes and you throw it at them to deal damage. It actually seems like a kind of cool engine back in the day. But moving on. 
A Fear Grove. Like I said, we've covered all these cards before, guys. I just want to do this for completion. I feel like if I start again from now on, it's okay to do this. But then I had to come back and try to fix up all the holes that I've created. So a Fear Grove is a total of 25 out of 40, and you'll see why. It's a one colorless, one green enchantment. A Fear Grove comes into play with three plus one plus one counters on it. During your upkeep, put one of these counters on target creature. If a Fear Grove has none of these counters on it, bury it. Its power, I've given it as a five, value as a six right now, but it is moving up fast. Power to seven, looks very nice and peaceful, and the fun is there. Now, the reason why I say the fun is there is because plus one plus one counters decks are out there. It's so, Atraxa, Doubling Season, Vorinclex, the new one. So many cards out there. Primal Vigor, I think, does the same thing. Plus one, plus one counters can be doubled. When this comes into play with the doubling season already there, it's six counters. When it moves a counter from, another, from itself to a creature, it doubles that, so it can have 12 counters. If you can pro proliferate, you can add counters to this. This is a really, really good bank. I don't think I went on about it enough in my other video. Moving on. Alabarbra's Carpet. Total, 19 out of 40. So, Alabarbra's Carpet is five colorless. A5, tap, prevent all damage done to you by attacking non-flying creatures. Power is four, value is two because it's spiked up to $46 on the market. Art is nine, I think it looks really cute and I like the background roofs and the carpet. I think it actually is a fun little card. It's got like a little genie as well. Very good Aladdin. Uh, and the fun factor is four because it doesn't really do much for the fun. It doesn't really do much for the power. The value is terrible. The reason why you'd want this card is because it's got cool artifact and it comes from a set that probably hasn't been printed as much as some of the other revised list sets. Moving on. Alcor's Tomb. Total 14 out of 40. From Legends. It's a 4 mana artifact. Pay 2. Tap. Change the color of target permanent you control. to a color of your choice. Use counters. Cost to cast. Tap. Maintain or use a special ability of card remains unchanged. Power is 2, value is 2 because it's spiking up to $23 now. Art is 6 because it actually looks pretty cool. I like that tree and the cloudy, dark kind of skies in the background. And the fun factor, it depends on what you're going to be able to use it for. Like if you want to change the color of your creatures every now and then for some kind of effect, could be interesting, could be fun. But I actually don't think that the value is there for this card. Other than the fact that it's from Legends. Moving on. Amulet of Coes, 7 out of 40. I probably should have given this a 0. Seems like a massive pain, no one should ever get it, but it is spiking right now. So Amulet of Coes is the one that brings into effect Anti. With Amulet of Unmaking, total 20 out of 40. Amulet of Unmaking is 5 colorless. Artifact, A5, tap, remove Amulet of Unmaking from the game. Remove target, artifact, creature, or land from the game. Play this ability as a sorcery. Power is 3. It can remove lands as well, which is kind of cool. Value is 5. It's only about a 88 cents right now, probably even less on TCG. Art is 8. I like the art. I like the fact that it feels, once again, like an Aladdin mystical theme. She does look shocked. And the fun factor is, it's not exactly a fun card. It's middle of the road. It can do some cool stuff, but you had to get rid of it, and you can't play it again and again. And continuing on. Anabar's Ancestor, total 15 out of 40, Homelands. Anabar's, Anabar's Ancestor is one colorless, one red. Tap, target Minotaur gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Power is two, value four, art six, fun three. Art's cool, it's got quite a bit of detail, but other than that, I don't think this is a good card. It's got a lot going against it. Just boring. Moving on. Apocalypse Chime, Homelands, a two mana artifact, pay two, tap, sacrifice Apocalypse Chime to bury all cards from the Homelands expansion. Power is one, value is four because it's dropped down for $15. I don't know if that means they can go back up to 15. Don't trust that. Art is six, it looks pretty cool. I like the characters in the background. I like the effort that someone put into this. Good job, Mark Pole. And the fun would be a three. I actually think that this would be funny in the decks that I'm playing, I'm planning to put together right now, because they would be very specific to include the um, reserve list cards. So, yeah, might work against the decks I'm putting together, but in, in the outside world, probably not. Moving on, Ashnod Silix. 
Total, 27 out of 40. Why is that? Alliance, two mana, artifact, a three tap. Target player looks at the top of the top three cards of his or her library and puts one of them on the top of the library, removing the remaining from the remaining two from the game. Power is six. Value is eight. It's a dollar right now. Probably even less on TCG. Art is seven. Very detailed. I like the squids. Fun is six. It's a sensei's divining top. It might not be fun for everyone while you do the sifting, but you're not going to be sifting as painfully as sensei's. And more importantly, there's limitations and a cost. I think it's still a cool card. I like cards that can dig, and I like old cards that can dig and actually look like they have some value. Moving on. Auspicious Ancestor. Total, 20 out of 40. Mirage. Three colorless, one white. If Auspicious Ancestor is put into the graveyard from play, gain three life. Pay one, gain one life. Use this ability only when a white spell is successfully cast and only once for each such spell. Pretty cool. Limited, li limited in life gain deck. But the life gain decks usually like to have incremental value over time. So the fact that when this dies, you gain three life is pretty cool. And you can gain one life for each creature that you play. As long as you pay one mana, colorless. Not too bad either. I think this is a cool card. It's very, probably very cheap on TCG. 65 cents on the marketplace. Power is four. Value six. Art five. Fun five. And this is all opinion, guys, so feel free to jump in and let me know in the comments if there's any reasons why they shouldn't be even close to these rankings. I am very generous, but I will probably get to the ones that are really valuable, and they'll probably lose out just because of how, how costly they are. Sadly, the value and the cost is one of those weird ones that I haven't found good balance for. Anyway, Autumn Willow. Total, 17 out of 40. Homelands, Autumn Willow is four colorless, two greens. Cannot be the target of spells or effects. Pay one green, target player may target Autumn Willow with spells or effects until end of turn. Interesting card, very, very cheap. It is spiking now. It used to be around about four and a bit dollars in 2013. Weird timing. So power level three, value four, art six, and fun four. Interesting fact, at some point in the past, there was a point where I was trying to make a Game of Thrones deck. I thought this would be really cool for, what's her face? Oh God. Well, that's embarrassing, but that's how much Game of Thrones stays in my head nowadays after the last couple of seasons. Anyways, I thought she'd be good for Eddard Starks, which is <laughs> Eddard Starks' wife. But yeah, she's a legend. That's kind of the reason I was thinking. Moving on. Avizio. Avizio is a 14 out of 40 card. Not that good. Avizio is three colors, one blue. Flying. Skip your next untap phase. A Vizio gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Uses ability only once each turn. It's a two two flyer for four. It's not that powerful. It's not that good. It, is it spiking? Yes, it is spiking. So I've given it power level three, but value five. I actually probably should reduce that because it keeps going up. Art is four. Kind of creepy. Fun two. Pretty boring card. Moving on. Asen's Crusader. Total twenty five out of forty. So. It's pretty high. Asen's Crusader is two colorless, two white. And Asen's Crusader has power and toughness equal, each equal to two plus the number of heroes you control. I think the reworded text for this is it's a knight. And more importantly, when it says number of heroes, I think that's barbarians and soldiers, or berserkers and soldiers. So that's a weird combination for what they think is heroes. I think heroes should probably cover a larger variety, which would make this card probably a bit too powerful in some ways. But I've given it a power level of three. The value is pretty good, especially since it is a knight. I like my gimmicky knights. And art is eight. Art looks pretty cool. And fun should be seven. You had to make a gimmicky deck to play this in. So, you know, the fun is forced onto you, but sometimes you need that for commander. I'll probably finish this off in the next three cards, guys, just in case it feels too long. I was hoping to get them all in one go, but I don't want to make this too long. People don't pay attention at the end anyways. Since our way is three colors, three white, all white creatures gain planeswalk. I feel like this is a terrible card. It's got power level of two, value three. Probably don't need it and shouldn't get it even if it is useful, but who knows nowadays. Art five. I think the art looks pretty cool. You can see the highway in the background and you can see the mountains and everything as well. It actually does feel pretty cold. And the fun factor, two. All all white creatures getting planeswalk might be more fun, but the fact is it just doesn't help in the help you in any way. So moving on. 
Bucky's Curse. Total 12 out of 40. Homelands. It is a two colorless, two white, uh, two colorless, two blue sorcery. Bucky's Curse deals two damage to each creature or each creature enchantment on that creature. I don't think this is going to be powerful. It is spiking right now. Power level is two, value four, art two, fun four. It does make you want to make an enchantment deck where you enchant the opponent's creatures and get them to do stuff. I just don't think that's going to be valuable or useful in the end. So moving on. Last one, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. Balduvian Hydra, total 20 out of 40. Ice Age. Balduvian Hydra is X red red. Summon Hydra. When Balduvian Hydra comes into play, put a Put X plus one plus zero counters on it. Pay zero. Remove a plus one plus zero counter from it to prevent one damage to the Hydra. Pay three. Put a plus one plus zero counter on Balduvian Hydra. Use this ability only during your upkeep. Eh. Power level is three. Value five. Art's pretty cool. Pretty cartoonish. And fun is four. It's a gimmicky thing to build around. Sadly, it has no green in it. Uh, I'll leave it at that guys. Let me know what you think about this new format. The reason I'm doing this is a couple of reasons, but one of them is I'm being priced out of my reviews for trash or treasure. So it's going to be harder and harder for me to find value cards in the range price range I'm thinking of. So instead of that, I might have to move over to this format. In the meantime, I'll do both and it's up to you guys to decide. I'm not worried too much if people don't watch this one, if they've already seen the others. Thanks again and have a good one. See ya.